The last time, all we wanted to do was to prepare to make some quick modules, but research took so long that we got severely sidetracked several times, doing some very important stuff I'm sure, like uh, uh, re-exploring already explored terrain, building a wall next to the water, and making fish farms on is, is this guy even playing factorio what, what's he doing uh, anyway uh, then of course all of a sudden research was done and he was nowhere ready to actually make some modules so to remedy that uh, he, he postponed actually making modules even further as he decided against making a probably not very temporary temporary red chip setup and instead do it properly and design the entire red chip setup for blue signs Tech-wise, we would love to proceed to get the 250,000 science pack costing technology of mining productivity, which would instantly add 10% mining speed increase, a 10% mining pollution reduction, and 10% ore patch longevity. But instead we are prioritizing the quality module for twice the cost. The potential resource savings of unlocking quality are much greater, but none of that is unlocked by simply researching the tech. It's gonna be much more difficult to tap into these resource savings, but on the other side, going quality before mining productivity will give us a head start on unlocking quality's potential. Well, I'm comparing these stacks like I have a well-balanced choice to make, but the facts are that mining productivity is the first 60 seconds per science spec technology in the game, which means we'll need twice the labs we currently have to consume the same 900 science packs a minute. So, quality first it is. But even further, we waste some time installing yet another green science iron mine and using this custom designed hideous splitter merger abomination to connect it to the existing ore. That should get green science back up from the dwindled 750 SPM to the full 900 SPM. Again. Alright, red chips time, no more postponing. Except we need to double the already previously doubled lab setup to accommodate for those future 60 seconds per science spec technologies. Or, well, at least reserve the space for it. And as we're planning to put productivity modules in the labs, we also need to account for the 10% speed penalty they impose on the labs. And that means we'll need not 900, but 1000 labs to absorb the full 900 science packs a minute. I didn't plan ahead for that curveball, and despite overbuilding labs earlier due to needing 60 green science assemblers in the early game when we had still a single production row, 4 lines and up at only 960 labs in total. Fortunately the starter copper mine has long run dry, and after we clean it up, the crashed spaceship pieces allow for precisely 3 columns of labs to be added to the lab area, making it 63 labs wide. Which means we end up with precisely 1008 labs. Destiny. Alright, red chips time, no more distractions. No? Nothing? Okay, uh, alright then, let's go! Space in the base is still at a premium, so we try to go for a design as compact as possible. Which means putting all 5 belts in the middle, between the two rows of assemblers. We need 2 belts of copper cable, plus 2 mixed belts of green chips and plastics coming in. And the half belt of red chips it produces can flow out on the center belt. Nice. It does require a lot of painstakingly placed underground belts and offset inserters to make it all work, and with the limited range of wooden power poles, we need to fill in literally every empty tile with a power pole to power all of the inserters. We will try to align the red chip build with the new expanded lab setup, trying to make it look nice. Blue Science is the first science pack that does not simply take one of each ingredient to make one science pack, so we will need a full belt and a half of red chips to make a full belt of Blue Science. Given that we need a massive 7.5 belts of copper and 3 belts of iron for the whole thing, it seems like a good idea to chop the design in 3 equal parts, each requiring 1 belt of iron, 1 belt of plastics and 2.5 belts of copper. 
Blue Science is also the first science pack of which the ingredients have long crafting times, which means we'll need a whopping 180 red chip assemblers in total, and the resources to keep all of them running non-stop. Now comes the hard part though. We need to convert one belt of copper into two belts of copper cable for red chips directly, and then the other one and a half belt of copper combines with the belt of iron to make a belt of green chips. All of this assembling, inputting and outputting, plus all of the belt routing ideally needs to be done in a vertical space of a mere 13 tiles. I feel like I'm playing a ribbon world all over again. Except this time I don't even have red belts to do some cursed belt weaving. Ah, belt weaving. Somehow we pull it off though, although the resulting build is probably one of the weirdest red chip builds you've ever laid eyes on. All we need to do now is just copy paste it three times right under the doubled lab setup. And oh my, do I wish I had construction boards right now man. That is a ton of tedious tile perfect hand building we'll have to do. Who signed up for this? Well, apparently I did, so we start off. And I quickly realize I forgot about the half belt part of the one and a half belt of copper for green chips. Try slotting that in there now mate, good luck. No problem, simply square the weirdness factor of the build and whoop, it's done. Uh, don't pay attention to the one hour jump in the timer there now, let's uh, switch it on and see it all work. Well, all work. That was uh, only the red chip ingredients part. We didn't have the time to build the red chip assemblers themselves yet, but whoop, another hour later and now we can finally start producing our first red chips. Meanwhile, we're already 4 hours deep into researching the quality module, and with 6 more hours to go before unlocking those, we will for now limit red chip production to only the amount we need to make productivity modules for the labs, and efficiency modules for the miners and all the rest of the base. Let's see, with 1000 labs to be activated soon, we will need a whopping 2000 productivity modules, and that's not even so bad compared to the nearly 1200 active mining drills taking 3 modules each, plus 600 assemblers and some other odds and ends, which together easily amounts up to like 5000 efficiency modules, and we'll need even more to build the blue science infrastructure. So yeah, let's put some quotation marks around that uh, limiting the red chip production, as that's an easy 35,000 chips already spent. On the other hand, our starter setup is making 450 red chips a minute, so that's actually only an hour of production or so. And after tediously hand building the rest of the lab area, we have enough red chips to start module production, which means soon the hand feeding zoo is busy making 2000 productivity modules. And a little less soon the labs are now proudly consuming nearly twice the power, 
for a quite underwhelming 8% productivity bonus on the cheap red and green signs. Worth it. Next up are the 5000 efficiency modules, of course also personally hand fed by yours truly. And we frantically scatter about the map to distribute them to all the mining sites. That giant 13 million red chip copper ore patch being the first one, as we are literally one chunk away from polluting the unstoppable biters there. Now that we have efficiency modules, which cut mining drill pollution by a whopping 80% to just 2 pollution a minute instead of 10, we have also unlocked the resource potential of ultra long distance guerrilla mining, and we can start to make use of some of the remote ore patches we secured with our early game pipe laying adventures. Regardless of the number of mining drills placed, we can precisely limit pollution output simply by how many belts of ore we allow to flow out. I destined this specific mine to supply two belts of iron ore for red signs, which means an average of 56 mining drills are gonna be running, despite 100 being present on the patch. Once some drills run out, some currently idle ones will take over. Even with efficiency modules we cannot simply cover the entire patch with drills though, we very much rely on the forests and the number of chunks of separation between the nearest behemoth worm to biter base and the mining outpost. So all of the drills are located in the leftmost chunks only. Adding one more chunk between the biters and I, and that chunk happens to be nicely forested too. Hopefully that'll be enough to keep the pollution from spreading to any biters. For some reason I saw that was very unreasonable to draw a power line out here, despite me being perfectly fine with drawing two uninterrupted belts back to the base. So we're running on solar power, again, without accumulators, but this time also without steam power for the nights. To still ensure uninterrupted ore flow throughout the night, we use an ore accumulator instead of an electric one, which means during the daytime the four belts will fill up completely, and during the productionless night time, those extra belts will feed the two output belts until the sun is well up again. Nice. Speaking of alternatives to electric energy accumulators, with the slow mining productivity research project being projected to require a whopping 108 megawatts of lab power, next up we double the steam power plant's output. Without actually increasing coal supply or placing more boilers. The base is currently power limited by the steam power plant's maximum of 180 megawatts during the night, as the 180 megawatt solar field is unable to contribute during the night. However, because the solar field chips in 180 megawatts during the daytime, if we keep turning coal into extra steam during the daytime to fill up this giant steam accumulator over here, we could theoretically run about 300 megawatts continuously by simply doubling the amount of steam engines. It does take some more base space, but the entire setup still is nicely and precisely tucked away into that weird northern outcrop of the base. In the meantime, two out of the four landfill mines have fully dried up at this point, so we can clear them out and free up that base space for future projects again. Like this Mars Grenade production facility. Blue signs it. Wait, grenades? What the heck do you need? Uh, 25,000 grenades for then? <laughs> Whatever, let's ignore that and try to proceed with some useful progress. I don't even want to think about what you could possibly do with that 25,000 grenades quantity stuff. Instead, let's get comfy and settle in for some quality time. Well. Even with my pro-level procrastination skills, I cannot stop the inevitable. But I can postpone it for one more episode. 
So, we'll go deep into my weird and normally unrecommendable quality strategy next time.